Hi guys and welcome to another Total Technic video. Today we're going to be looking at how to remove the steering wheel control module. This is from the A4, S4 or RS4 uh, B6 or B7 models. They all have a very, very uh, similar setup. Obviously it's hidden in uh, behind the steering wheel so there's quite a lot of strip down work you've actually got to do to gain access to it. Okay, we're going to look at removing the uh, airbag from the B7. Uh, this, is, this applies to the A4, S4 and uh, RS4, uh, Avant Saloon uh, and Cabriolet, all the same. Uh, the only thing to note with this, um, this is the newer one, the three-spoke steering wheel, the B7. The B7 airbag is a dual stage as opposed to the B6, the older model, uh, which has a single stage uh, airbag. So make sure you're familiar uh, with the differences between the B6 and the B7. Uh, but if you're, yours is a B7, uh, which is basically 2005 through 2007, uh, your steering wheel should look similar to this and your airbag should be this shape and this is the dual stage airbag. You can leave the positive connected uh, so you shouldn't even lose any of your uh, stereo settings or, or anything like that. Okay so um, first thing to do obviously remove the uh, battery cover as, as most of them are unfortunately this one is, uh, is, is broken but usually just follow the arrows slide it to the side and lift it off and all we need to do with a size 10 uh, ratchet spanner just disconnect the uh, negative, like so, and just tuck that out of the way. Okay, just having a, uh, a quick look from this angle. Uh, there's two screws that hold the uh, the airbag into the wheel, and if you look on the side here, this little semicircle shape just there, those are actually the screw cap covers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to maneuver the steering wheel into a position where I can get a bit more. Uh, angle onto it, I need to remove these covers and then below these are two Torx 30 screws. Uh, the first thing is is to get, get these covers off. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this uh, through 90 degrees just to give us a little bit of access uh, to uh, removing the, uh, the screws. So we've got the key in, turn it two positions just to make sure that the uh, steering lock doesn't come on. And we just turn it through 90 degrees like so. Okay so now we've turned the uh, wheel through 90 degrees, can we uh, get this uh, cap off? Now very very carefully with the hook tool, just press it in very gently, like so, and just push the whole thing sideways, pops out very very easily, and just remove the cap. Okay, so next we've got to uh, remove the Torx that size 30 uh, screw that's in here. It's actually uh, seated at a 45 degree angle, so when you put your, uh, your tool in to uh, access this, it doesn't go straight in like you might think, it's actually a 45 degree angle. Uh, because space is limited, I find the best thing to do to put in a Torx 30 bit, like so, and get a size 10 ratchet spanner, and just loosen it off in this manner. Now that screw doesn't actually come out, it, stay, it stays in the steering wheel, so what you want to do is just keep undoing it, and you want, to, you want to undo it far more than it actually needs, it's probably already undone, I can hear it clicking. But you can't undo it too much because like I say it will stay in situ so just, just give it a load of twists until you're happy that it's uh, probably disconnected like so. Okay so we've removed the screw on the one side so now all we need to do is just turn the wheel through 180 degrees <coughs> like so now to give us access to the other side so exactly as before uh, just remove the, uh, the screw cap and then remove that screw. Okay so with the uh, with the two screws removed uh, you see you find that the whole uh, unit's nice and loose. This can just be uh, moved carefully forward. Now don't uh, pull it out too quickly, so you've got your electrical connections on the back. Like so. Now if you have a quick look on here, uh, what we have on the, on the rear here are the uh, dual connections, the dual stage airbag, as so this is the, uh, the B7 model. Uh, the B6 only has one of these, the B7 has this dual stage airbag. And you also have a couple of spade connectors there. Uh, you've got two options, you can either remove uh, these two just by simply inserting a little uh, a screwdriver under the lip, popping that centre yellow section up and then pulling the whole clip out and then disconnecting the two uh, spade connectors. Uh, or, as is the, uh, the, the recommended method of doing it, we can remove this connector on the inside of the wheel. Now if you have a quick look at this, uh, obviously you've got the airbag going into one side You've actually got another connection that comes out the other side of this plug down to a second plug down here. Uh, your, your steering wheel may not have this, uh, this is uh, one of the options. Uh, so it may not have this, if it hasn't then it makes it nice and easy, uh, this one has. So you see on this yellow connector, 
there's a little purple there tab on the top of it. Now what I need to do is just uh, pull this purple tab up to back towards me and then the whole plug should, uh, should come out. Like so. And then like I said, we've got this uh, on this uh, particular car, we've got this additional plug down here. Should be uh, trying to lift that up on, on this side here. Like so, that's better. There you go. And once you have that disconnected, your airbag's ready to go. The B6 model has this triangular three spoke uh, shaped airbag as opposed to the B7 which has a perfectly um, kind of rectangular square shaped airbag. So it's very distinctive. This is the B6 style of airbag here. Pop your uh, bonnet up and disconnect the black uh, connector from the battery before we move any further. So get that done and we'll carry on. So uh, once we've disconnected the, uh, the battery what we're going to look at doing is uh, creating a little bit more space for ourselves so we're just going to uh, put this into a bit of uh, an easier position to work from. So if you make sure, uh, in case your steering lock is on, make sure your key's in. Yeah, it is on this one. Release your uh, steering lock. And what you're going to do is pull it all the way up and all the way out as far as you'll go. And we're going to lock it in that position. Now uh, we're going to um, be unscrewing the bolts that connect this on. You can actually do it from, from the top uh, or from underneath. What I'm going to be doing uh, uh, this time is I'm actually going to be doing it from underneath. Uh, which is why I've kind of moved it up uh, rather than down. Uh, but you can do it from the top or the bottom. Uh, but we'll take a look at that now and I'll show you where the bolts are. So first of all, I'm just going to quickly show you where the uh, the holes are located, uh, which give you access to the bolts to remove this. It's actually on the rear of the steering wheel. If you can come around the rear there, hopefully you can see that just at the end of my finger there. Uh, we have that little hole uh, in the uh, in the back of the steering wheel itself. That hole in the back of the steering wheel gives you access to the torque screw uh, that actually holds that on. So you see we've got one here and we've got an identical one on the uh, direct opposite side of the steering wheel as well. So that's what we're going to be working on. So to allow us to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the steering wheel through 90 degrees like so. And that will give me access as I'm going to be uh, working from uh, from below on this. That will give me access to this uh, this bolt hole here. So uh, we'll grab the, uh, grab the Torx bit and we'll get this removed. Now I find the uh, the easiest way is to actually use a, uh, a Torx bit, it's a Torx size 30 and a size 10 uh, ratchet spanner in this manner. You can do it with a with a small um, wrench and a socket if you prefer. I find this to be the easiest way. Now like I said this is a, a Torx size 30. When you insert it into the, uh, the hole just here, uh, Note that it doesn't go in straight as you'd think it is. It's kind of a, on a almost a 45 degree angle. So sometimes it can take a little uh, that's all gone straight in. But hopefully you can see the uh, the angle on that isn't straight. It's at 45 degrees. You can slacken this off, and it doesn't actually need much to crack it off. And note uh, that the bolt doesn't actually leave the steering wheel. Uh, so after we've removed the uh, airbag. This will actually stay in situ. Now the easy way to uh, to tell if you've undone it enough is as you turn it, you should hear it clicking each, each rotation as it gets to the end of the thread. So that's fine. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, rotate the steering wheel 180 degrees, and that will give us access to the uh, to the uh, hole on the opposite side. I'm going to do exactly the same on that side. So let's get that done, and then we can look at removing this from the car. So we've now removed uh, the two uh, torque screws uh, that are in the, uh, the rear of the steering wheel here that hold this airbag into place. And those are the only two things that actually hold this, uh, this airbag into situ. I'll turn this back to the, uh, the centre, be a little bit more easy for you to see. Uh, but if you give it a wobble, you can see that the whole thing is ready to, uh, ready to jump out now. Uh, there are electrical connections on, on the back of here, so don't just you know, think you can just take this straight off. You have to lift it up carefully to gain access to the uh, the wires that are behind that. Okay, so when you do pull this forward, do be careful because uh, you do have the wires that are ready there uh, that need to be disconnected. Okay, so if I lift this uh, forward and up carefully so you can see, uh, that'll show you the, uh, the electrical connections uh, that, are, that are within this uh, airbag here. As you can see, you've got two plugs. You've got a yellow plug here that connects through into the, uh, the squib uh, or the clock spring. Uh, now if you want to disconnect that, you've also got uh, several of these kind of spade connectors as well 
Uh, they also need to be disconnected and you may have additional kind of connectors as well all come through this depending on what optional extras you've got fitted to your car. Uh, but that's one option. The yellow plug's very easy to get out, but the spade connectors can be a little bit of a pain. The other option, which is what we're going to look at, is to uh, attack this um, uh, this purple plug, this yellow insert here, um, because once you've disconnected that, it's only the, the one plug. You haven't got to worry about any of the spade connectors or anything of that nature. So uh, we'll take a look at this now. So to disconnect this, you need a small flathead screwdriver. Press, just press that into the end. There it comes. Almost out. And the uh, yellow, the yellow part does actually need to come out quite a way uh, before it will release. There it is. So it's a little bit of a fiddle. Uh, like I say, you've got to pull it out a little bit further than you think. Uh, but that's uh, that's how you disconnect that. Now, if you uh, zoom out a second, we can see. That is your airbag completely 100% removed from the car and good to go. Okay, so having a, a quick look at uh, what's required to remove this steering wheel, see in the center we've got this rather large bolt and inside that bolt uh, you will see there's actually an M12 uh, which is quite a large spline uh, bit that's required to actually get this out. That's what fits in there. Okay, now not all... Um, not all sets of uh, bits uh, come with these as standard, these splines. Most have torques, most have hex, uh, but not many kits come with these these, uh, these spline bits. However, you can get these bits uh, in little sets on eBay uh, very, very cheaply. Um, so well worth taking a look at if you don't own, own them already. Maybe £5, seven or eight dollars, something like that will buy you a little cheap set of, uh, of these spline bits. But you need an M12 uh, to actually fit into there. So make sure you've got one of those and uh, we can move on. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, start attacking the uh, the bolt in the uh, centre of the steering wheel. And I've got my uh, my M12 um, spline bit on here, and what I've done, I've actually ensured that I've got uh, an extension bar that's uh, long enough so that the uh, the actual handle of the wrench doesn't touch the steering wheel. It's not going to scuff the uh, the steering wheel as we try and undo it uh, in, in this manner. If you use one that's too short, obviously you can rub on the uh, rub on the leathery steering wheel, might end up uh, causing your steering wheel damage. So make sure that this is long enough. And the only other thing that we need to do, as we're going to be putting our pressure into the centre of the wheel, is to ensure that your steering wheel lock is on by removing the key. Okay. And once you've done that, the uh, steering wheel itself can, uh, can't move away, and so we can actually put a bit of force onto this without the, the, the whole wheel turning at the same time. So let's get that removed. Okay. And one thing to note uh, when you're removing this is they can be on fairly tight, so you may need a fairly long wrench. Uh, to get this out. Uh, the reason that they're quite tight and they remain quite tight is usually uh, from the uh, from the factory they actually put like a, a nut lock uh, onto the, uh, the thread of the bolt as you'll see uh, hopefully unless this one proves me wrong uh, when this comes out in you know, just just a few seconds. Now obviously when you uh, come to reinstall this it's a good idea if you've got it available to put some nut lock back on it however don't put too much on it's surprising how uh, how little you need. Okay now very very important once you've removed this this bolt do not go ahead and pull the steering wheel off there's a couple of very very important things that i'll cover in a second before you remove that okay but let's get rid of that bolt as you can see hopefully on the uh, on the bolt there you can see a, a ring of blue uh, that's the uh, the nut lock uh, that's uh, factory fitted uh, as i mentioned before what the uh, nut lock does essentially it stops the uh, stops the um, fixing from ever kind of rattling free it, it helps secure it it's almost like a, a very light glue, if you like, uh, that glues it in place, uh, but it's not too strong. So when you put pressure on it, you can you can easily break that seal again. Uh, so that's the bolt removed. Like I said, do not uh, at this stage actually remove the steering wheels. A couple of very important things we need to do beforehand. So let's take a look at those. Now, one thing to bear in mind before you actually remove the uh, the steering wheel itself, which I'm going to show you in just a second, okay, is the uh, the clock spring or the squib uh, here that sits underneath your steering wheel. Now on uh, some models of cars, thankfully generally not Audis, uh, but on, on some models of cars, when you remove the uh, steering wheel, the clock spring is free to move and the whole thing will spring round and um, it will go out of sync and then you've, you've got to try and manually wind it again. Now you don't have to worry about that, so don't panic on any anything to do with the clock spring because thankfully on the Audi, they've actually got, you, you, I'll show you just here, I'm going to hold the, hold the clock spring in situ. 
so the clock spring can't move out of the, the, the position it is at the, at the moment. You've actually got this little uh, uh, spring lock here. Now that allows you to move it fully. But we're not going to do that. So basically as soon as you pull the steering wheel off, which we're going to do in just a second, it will lock that because this will spring out. And so you do not have to worry uh, about your clock spring going out of alignment, which is very, very handy. Nice little uh, design from Audi. I uh, wish all manufacturers did this. Uh, unfortunately, not all of them do. Um, so that, that's a nice little thing. But don't panic on the, uh, on the clock spring. That won't affect the, uh, the removal of the steering wheel. Now, the second thing you need to do before you actually remove this, this wheel from the column, very, very important is... Uh, as you can, well, hopefully you can see this on the video, the uh, the teeth that um, that are around this uh, this kind of circle that are actually on the uh, the column here, very very fine. So it's very easy if you just get it kind of one or two teeth off, your steering wheel will be off centre. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to mark this before you remove it. So when you come to put the wheel back on, you can make sure that you get it exactly straight because you know you've you've got such small tolerance uh, between the um, between the notches and this that it's very very easy uh, to, to get it wrong now if you look very very clearly in the center on this on your steering wheel you actually see a little indentation hopefully you can see that at the end of the uh, end of the screwdriver there just there okay that's that's a factory mark okay so your steering wheel will have that now that is the dead center of the steering wheel itself okay so what we need to do is we're going to put a little mark onto the uh, onto the end of the column here, um, just on here, that will allow us to realign these when you come to put the steering wheel back on. Very, very important that you do this before you remove the steering wheel. What you want to do, make sure that's clean, you want to get a, a very, very fine, if you can, uh, fine tip permanent marker. I'm just going to lean in. I just want to make sure I get this 100% in line. So I do apologise if I block your uh, your view for a second. Okay. So, so what I've done there is I've put a small line that's directly in line uh, with the uh, the mark that in, that illustrates the uh, the dead centre of the steering wheel. So now I can safely remove this. So all you do is you pull it forward. And that is your steering wheel completely removed uh, from the car. And like I say, the importance of that mark is when you come to fit this, fit this back up, that will allow you to ensure that you get it exactly as it was before you removed it. So it's really, really important that you put that little mark on it. As soon as you've done that, you've removed this plug, just remove the whole thing gently from the car, and that is your steering wheel removed. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is just remove your... Uh, dash end panel here uh, that will give you access to the uh, to the bolts on the side here uh, these are very very uh, easy to remove there's a little uh, notch cut into the bottom just come up under the notch with a screwdriver or a uh, trim tool pop it off and the whole thing will come off like so once that's done it's going to give you access to the uh, first of the uh, bolts that we need to remove this one right here uh, all of the fixings on this are size 8 so just undo that with your size 8 socket like so, and we'll move on to the next. Okay, the next fixing we need to remove is actually down underneath, uh, just in here at the end of my finger. It comes up at a 45 degree angle. I don't know whether you can see that in there, uh, but just in there, that's the next fixing to come out. Okay, so we've just uh, removed the 45 degree angle uh, bolt uh, here that's holding it in. Now we've got one that's exactly the same, but on the opposite side, uh, just under there. Yeah, so again, 45 degrees on the opposite side, right next to the centre console. That's the next one to be removed there. OK, guys, so we've removed the, uh, the screw from the side and the two screws uh, from the bottom on this panel. So it's now ready to, uh, to come out. There isn't an upper screw on the uh, console side. Uh, there's only an upper screw on the outside. Uh, one important thing to, uh, to note is when, uh, when you pull this off, uh, there is actually one electrical connection connected to the back of it, and that's for the OBD, uh, which is your diagnostic socket, uh, which is the uh, diagnostic socket located at the back here, which I'll show you when I, I drop this down. Uh, so when you uh, drop it down, try and drop it down quite gently. You don't want to be, um, you know, ripping the, uh, uh, the uh, wires or the attachments on the back of that plug. So what we're going to do is give it a bit of a wobble. You see it unpops here on this side. It's going to do exactly the same on the other side as well. Like so. And 
then the whole thing drops down. And this is the uh, connection just here uh, that I was telling you about, which is your OBD, your diagnostic. Uh, it does just push out. You see this little uh, catch on here, it wasn't quite snapped in. Um, normally you've got to pull that in and pull it out. That's your diagnostic socket there, so be careful uh, that you're not putting any undue strain on that. And uh, also, I did forget about this, you can see at the back there is the uh, is the connection for the uh, the footlight just there. That's what illuminates the footwell when you get into the car. So just wobble that side to side. And pop that off like so. And then this whole unit is free to be removed from the car. So the first thing that we need to do is there's a couple of uh, torque screws right in the front here. Now if I can, uh, I can show you this, uh, it's, a bit, it's a slightly specialist tool, uh, this is a Torx size 8 which is a particularly small um, Torx screwdriver and you need to ensure, um, I had to buy this specifically to, to do this job and this is uh, literally the only, only job that I do uh, generally on, on these Audis uh, that actually uses this, this uh, Torx size 8 screwdriver. You need to ensure it's got a fairly long blade. This one is uh, 7.5 centimeters, 75 mil uh, in length. This blade here, and that's just about long enough. Any shorter than that, and you're, you're going to uh, you're going to struggle. But if we have a look just to the underside, just here, hopefully you can see that uh, that screw hole nice and clearly there. And uh, of course, there's uh, an identical one uh, over on the other side, uh, just here. So what you want to do, as you can see, it's just long enough. Unscrew the uh, two screws. The thing to bear in mind is they are, they are actually quite long. So I tend to uh, unscrew them much much more than is actually needed. And what you'll find is sometimes the screw won't come out like so. Sometimes if you're lucky you can give it a bit of a tap and it will fall out. Not today. Do the, uh, the same on the other side here. You can just see there, hopefully you caught that. The, uh, the first screw that I did uh, has actually fallen out now. So, no, that one's not going to fall out. It probably will randomly in a second or so. So that's the first thing to do is get those two uh, Torx size 8 removed. And these are the, uh, the little Torx size 8. You see tiny little uh, screws. Uh, but they are actually quite long, uh, so like I said, you've, you know, you're best kind of um, unscrewing them far more than the, you, you need, uh, just to ensure that they actually come out. And, and then, like I say, if you give it a bit of a tap, hopefully you will get both of the uh, both of the uh, the screws that, that come out uh, like so. Uh, but that's the screws that were uh, that you need to get out first. So, with the two small hex screws removed from the front, what we need to do is now come down to the underside. If you drop your steering wheel adjustment lever to a down position and have a look up inside, you can see just off the side there, there's a small little indentation in the plastic within which you will find a size 4 hex screw. So that's the next one that needs to be removed. Now uh, one thing to, uh, to note, there are little uh, kind of plastic clips that hold the, uh, the top and the bottom half together. You see they, they don't exist on the front. But they do exist towards the back. So first thing to do, I'll try and do it on your side so you can you can see. I'll just try and pop those uh, apart a little bit like so. As you can see there is a you know kind of a little plastic clip there that holds these together. We'll do the same on the opposite side. Now the next thing you need to uh, concentrate on is you've got this uh, this rubber Hopefully you can just see that there. It's a little rubber section that sits around the uh, the key chamber here. What you want to do is I kind of put my finger on the inside, actually try and take the rubber section with the uh, with the cowl, like so. So as you can see, the, uh, the cowl is now completely loose and is uh, ready to come off. There's a little trick to getting this off there that I'll show you now. Okay, so as you can see, it's, it's completely free. The only thing that's uh, stopping it coming off of the car is your uh, lever for your uh, steering wheel column adjustment. Okay, now the, the trick to getting this off is to kind of try and twist it at a slight angle. It's a little bit awkward. This is why we have to remove the uh, the lower panel really to, to get the access to it. But it, as you see, I kind of put it over, twisted it and took it back and you can get it off. So that, that's the key to it. It's kind of giving it that, that little bit of a twist. 
but that is your uh, lower steering wheel cowl completely removed from the car. Now if we take a quick look um, here once we've uh, removed the, uh, the lower dash panel, I've just removed this as a size 8 um, uh, screw here that sits in the end of the uh, decorative trim because uh, as you can see on this uh, decorative trim here it's the same screw that holds in the uh, the, uh, the section that the metal frame that attaches to the uh, the end of the cowl. Hope you can see it rattling away in the uh, in the center of the, uh, the screw hole there. It actually sits on top of it. So you've got to remove that size eight screw to give you a little bit of a uh, movement here. And exactly the same on the uh, on the opposite side. I've, I've just done it here as well. You can see the exactly the same principle uh, just here. So you've got to remove those two screws, and then we can move on. So on the, uh, the upper steering wheel cowl you have the uh, plastic section and attached to that is like um, a, a cloth kind of leatherette uh, type section and on the end of that is like a kind of a metal frame, a metal curved frame and that's kind of what, what holds this in situ. So that, that's the bit that you need to get out. So as you can see you know the whole thing's uh, pretty much ready to come out. Uh, it's just the uh, the metal frame uh, that we need to that we need to pop out from around the, uh, the sides here. So a little bit of manipulation. Patient and take your time with this, and it will it will come. You just kind of got to know where to uh, where to press it. You'll, you'll feel it if you do it stage by stage. So we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, what we just did there, um, as you can see, it's actually plastic on this one. On, on some of this, this uh, this frame's metal. Uh, makes no difference. But you can see your plastic sections attached to this kind of leather leather effect section, which attaches onto this frame. Uh, so that's the frame that we need to remove, and that's why we needed to uh, remove. Uh, the um, those two screws from the end of the decorative trims uh, because like I said before the end of the decorative trim sits on top of that and then the whole bolt goes through the center of everything okay so with those uh, screws in you'll, you'll never get this removed um, so that's it that is your upper steering wheel cowl removed spring itself and uh, there's not a lot that actually holds this on as you'll see it's, um, it's, 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 it's held on with only a couple of little clips uh, this whole thing is going to come off uh, forward towards us. There's a little electrical connection on the uh, on the rear there. Uh, it's quite difficult to access um, with the uh, probably see it towards the back there. It's quite difficult to access uh, whilst it's uh, in situ as it is. So what we'll do is we'll remove uh, unplug the uh, the clips that allow us to move it forward a little bit, and that'll make it a little bit easier to uh, to gain access to to what we need. So I'll show you where they are. Clips that hold this uh, this squib onto the uh, onto the steering column. Have a look over to the side here at the end of my screwdriver. Hopefully, you can just about see that there. It's a little uh, plastic tab. Now, if I pop that off and give it a wiggle, you see I've uh, created a little bit of space there. So that's that's, that's what you want to look for is these little uh, plastic tabs. I've got an identical one on the uh, on the other side, just in here. So pop that up, pop that forward like so. As you see, the whole thing is starting to uh, to want to move forward now. Now, if we go uh, underneath here. We've got uh, another one here, a very very similar type of uh, connection, like so. So it's just those three. Now once I've done that, you can see the whole thing uh, comes forward, and that's going to give us access to the uh, the connection on the back, which is the, the last thing that's holding this on. So let's take a look at that. So we've got this little uh, electrical connector at the back here, a compression type connector. Let's push the, uh, the tab down and uh, pull that off, like so. And then what we have here, is we have your clock spring, uh, aka your squib, that's completely removed from the car. So once we uh, have, have access to the uh, the wiper stalk, uh, there's a couple of uh, little um, screws that are holding it in. Uh, if, you, if you look, there's kind of four screws dotted around it. However, it's just the uh, the inner two that we're going to be focusing on. These are Torx um, size eight, which is a very small uh, Torx, and these these are uh, size Torx. Uh, size 8 on the B6 or the B7, they're literally only used within the steering wheel uh, assembly, they're not used anywhere else on the car. So this is the only time that we, uh, that we actually use this, uh, this particular tool. So what you want to do is loosen off the upper and uh, lower screws. You can hear them click when, they, uh, when you get to the end of the thread there, so you know that they're definitely completely undone. Now if you just slide the whole unit forward like so, you can see 
but that is your uh, your wiper stalk uh, removed from the car. If I turn that around for you just to give you a, a quick uh, illustration of how it works very quickly, here's the uh, electrical connection that slides inside uh, the plug here that's built onto the steering wheel control module and the uh, the two screws, uh, hopefully you can see those just there, uh, they fit through into this, um, this metal bracket just here. So that's it, it's as simple as that, that's how to remove your wiper stalk. Now, uh, if we take a quick look uh, at the uh, the stalk itself, uh, if you've ever removed the uh, the wiper stalk, or if you've checked out the uh, the video on how to remove the wiper stalk, uh, you'll know that that comes out in one one unit qu quite easily. And when you look at the uh, the indicator stalk, you'd be forgiven for thinking uh, that the unit comes out uh, in this manner, this square kind of block here. And when you undo the screws, that will lift out. That's not the case uh, for the indicator unit. Uh, the indicator unit actually includes all of this uh, this plastic uh, all the way around the uh, the center of the steering column here all of this and you can see this kind of copper um, guard here uh, that's all attached around the um, uh, around this as well so there's a little bit more involved uh, than it is to, to get your opposite side stalk off the wiper stalk uh, but we'll take a quick look at it now first thing you need to do is get yourself a torx t8 first thing is, is to take out these two screws two innermost screws like so. So I'm just going to remove those two and set them to one side. So get rid of those and then we can move on. The copper coloured frame uh, will actually be being removed uh, along with the uh, indicator stalk. Now as you can see there's a little uh, uh, screw here. Uh, that's a, actually a, a Torx uh, size 4 I believe that is. So that one's going to need to be removed in a second. And as you, the other thing you can see here is you've actually got this, um, this connector uh, here which uh, holds a cable tie which comes through it's actually got the um, the electrical connector here for the um, for the actual key chamber uh, key chamber okay and what you want to do is um, you can you can disconnect this um, if, if, if you like but the, the easiest way to do it is just to gently feed this back through ridge by ridge a little bit of a, a wobble a little bit of a toing and throwing there he comes You'll be able to you'll be able to free that off. Uh, so that that's the first stage, like so. The second stage is to get your little uh, your little hex uh, size four and just zip that off, like so. There we go. So now we should be able to. So we've moved the inner two most screws here. We've removed the uh, the cable tie attachment and the uh, the little silver uh, uh, hex screw from the underside here. See the whole thing's uh, almost ready to come off. Now the easiest way to do this is just to very carefully lift up the uh, the steering wheel control module. It's got an upside down U-shaped piece, as you can see here. Just very carefully lift this off and just to the side. Okay, be careful with that. So that's got some cabling in in the rear of it. Okay, and that will give us access, if we look on the uh, on the top here, that will give us access to, uh, to the, uh, the mounting um, for this uh, electrical connection. So this is what I'm going to disconnect next, and that will allow me to remove the whole thing from the column. Now to disconnect this plastic bracket um, from the uh, stalk itself, you see you've got these little uh, plastic tabs. So just pop one of those off on the one side, like so. And that will allow you to remove it like so. I'm just going to pop that back into a situ to keep that safe. Uh, but that is your uh, that's your indicator stalk uh, completely removed from the car. So as you can see, if I turn that around for you, it is this whole entire section, uh, including this centre section and uh, this uh, metal bracket as well. Uh, so it's quite a quite a chunky uh, thing there. Okay, so uh, that's it removed. Okay, so with all that removed, uh, this will give us uh, the access we need to actually uh, get this steering wheel column uh, out of the car. Now you see you've got the uh, the key chamber, it's got a little electrical connection on it here, and it feeds through in between two kind of uh, plastic brackets here. So the first thing to do is just gently uh, remove that uh, from this little uh, bracket system on the uh, bottom corner. So that's the first thing. Now the other thing we need to do to be able to remove this is actually uh, quite a bigger uh, plug, electrical connection on the uh, on the back. On the uh, inner side here so I'm just going to very gently lift that up and twist that around that'll give you a, a good view there of the electrical connection that's on the back obviously you've got uh, the usual compression tab there so I'm just going to pull that down pull the whole thing forward like so so as you can see 
Uh, you do have to do quite a lot of strip down work to, to get to this stage, but to actually remove the, uh, the steering wheel control module itself is, uh, is fairly straightforward. So that is your steering wheel control module uh, completely removed and good to go.